pretty interesting time. We still have so much economic uncertainty, but we just got through a round of Wall Street earnings where the big players had some very strong revenues uh, posted tied to trading. And this morning on Bay Street, Canaccord Genuity out with their quarterly results, record revenue for the company over the last three months. And uh, that includes a 30% year-over-year lift in the financials tied to investment banking, the revenue on that front. Let's bring in Dan Davio. He's the, the president and CEO of Canaccord Genuity. Um, Dan, thanks for being with us. Um, let's just start with what the operating environment was like for you guys over this last three months. Sure, John, and, th and thanks again for having me. Uh, it's a rem it, it's been a remarkable environment. You see it in our revenue, and you've seen what's happened. We've got an incredibly resilient business, given everything that's been going on around us. Um, you know, record revenue. Uh, you know, it used to be that Canada would represent the majority of our profitability. Now it's about a third. Our Australian business performed extraordinarily strongly. Our U.S. business performed extraordinarily strongly, and of course, all the growth that we've you know invested in our in our wealth businesses, both in Canada, Australia, and, and most importantly the U.K., all performed really well in the quarter. We saw you know asset levels come back, so it's been it, it, it's been remarkable. I wouldn't have thought sitting here today with a global pandemic in front of us and behind us that any business could have performed as strongly as this one has. So what do you think? I mean, I guess it depends on which business, and we'll go through some of them. But if you had to summarize why the performance was as strong as it was in the face of this uncertainty, what do you think it was? Well, there's, there's two or three things that really have driven massive outperformance. One, clearly, is the mining market has come back uh, substantially. There's been you know, a reflationary effort on the, on the part of the central banks, and they've put a lot of money in the economy. And as a result, you know, people have flocked towards you know precious metal stocks. We are the dominant precious metal or mining underwriter in the world. We've done a 116 deals in the last 12 months. We've raised over two billion dollars, nearly double our nearest global competitor. So it's been a really important sector for us. So that's dramatically outperformed, which in part drove the Australia results. They almost did a full year this this last quarter in terms of results. But also, it's not just that. Our trading businesses, to your point, are incredibly active. When markets are volatile, going up and down, people make moves. People trade stocks. And we've got a huge trading presence, particularly in the U.S., both an agency trading business and a principal trading business. And those perform, overperform dramatically as well. Do you think that's going to continue? I mean, it, it, we often talk about... Uh the level of retail interest in, in just getting into these markets right now. Uh, we just got through a, a segment where we, we talked about housing in Toronto. People are looking for places to literally make a return when you're not sure about other places where you can, you know, put money in your pocket. So, I mean, how does the outlook look on the trading front from your perspective? Remarkably strong, given we're in the middle of summer. Typically, this would be a slow period of, for us. I mean, typically people aren't, mm. you know, staring at their computers and trading stocks. But we've had a really busy period, not only in terms of trading and investing, but also new issue. There's an, an immense amount of risk capital out there. To your point, where people are looking for things to invest in, and that's to our, you know, advantage. The sectors we're in: mining, technology, healthcare. Those are the sectors that are really busy, and those are our most important sectors. So it shouldn't come as a surprise that our banking revenue was up as much as you saw that. And, and it looks like at, on the wealth management side, particularly in Canada, I, I believe you had a new milestone in terms of the client assets. Now, I guess if stocks are going up, that can help there. But what have you guys been hearing from uh, different clients, new clients, people who are looking not just to get into the market today to trade, but are kind of thinking about their investing future right now, given the economic uncertainty? Well, you, you, you've, you made the key point there. When things are volatile, people don't necessarily believe in self-advice. They want advice. They want to have a full-service offering, which is what we provide them. So in Canada in particular, we've seen material net asset inflows, clients giving us more money to help them invest. And that's been an important driver for our overall business. We also have, you know, very good recruiting. The recruiting had stopped in Canada during the middle of COVID, but we brought on two new, or sorry, four new advisory teams in the last couple of weeks. We've got an active pipeline of more advisors that are going to be joining us shortly. So we're seeing that free up as well. That's driving asset growth. And of course, to your point, the market has recovered. 
Is, are, are you saying? Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, the line broke up there a little bit. Are, are you saying no. acquisi like acquisitions? You would be doing uh, deals to build up the wealth management team. Well, no, we, we bring on individual brokers and brokerage teams in Canada. That's primarily been our growth driver. So we brought on, I think, about 45 teams of advisors over the last three years, four very recently, and we're going to continue to see more teams join us because we've got a very good platform here. In the UK, we tend to buy smaller firms and integrate them into our business, and we're doing both of those things. And of late, Australia, where we had bought Patterson Securities as our benchmark for our business, which has helped drive our office, our overall Australian business, we're also looking to recruit into that market as well. Okay. Now, um, uh, speaking of the wealth management business, um, some people have been wondering about the structure of Canaccord Genuity going forward. Um, you brought on a activist investor, Eric Rosenfeld, well known to, to people who've been watching the markets for many years. So he's on the board, I think, as of July. Um, how's that been going? And, and for this conversation around some of the moves you might be making, uh, particularly with wealth management, maybe in the UK, um, any updates you can provide on that front? Yeah, listen, Eric, Eric's a, a well-known investor. Yes, he's done some activist investing in the past, but he's also a well-known investor. And he, like myself and our senior management team here and our shareholders, appreciated just how undervalued our stock was. So notwithstanding that our stock's up about 60% in the last uh, three months since the kind of the depths of COVID, you know, he, he and us continue to perceive that we're materially undervalued relative to our comparables and where they trade. So, um, you know, he's, he's a great addition to the board. He's a shareholder, and we're delighted that we have a large shareholder on our board. But he's not the only addition to our board. At the AGM, which happens in an hour, we're also going to have Jill Denham join our board. That brings our diversity up on our, our board. We'll have 30% women. He's got a phenomenal reputation delighted by the additions to our board and uh, couldn't be more excited about the prospects of the company going forward. All right. And just All to, right. to and further just clarify on the wealth management side, can you just lay out what, uh, what you're thinking on that front for anyone who's wondering if there could be any changes to the, the structure <laughs> of that business? Yeah, I mean... The, our wealth management asset, uh, the, the UK comparable companies trade at 15 plus times earnings. We don't trade at that. We trade at nine-ish nine times earnings right now. I mean, clearly there's value in that asset. You know, we believe having a large platform is important. We think there's, huge, you know, material upside in that business as we integrate the acquisitions that we've made and continue to do in new acquisitions. So, Clearly, it's it's incumbent on us to make sure that our stock price reflects that value. There's nothing materially strategic that's going to go on in the short term, but clearly we are, you know, continue to think through what all our value creating options are with respect to our business. Nothing's off the table and nothing's necessarily on the table. All right. Hey, Dan, always appreciate it. Thanks for the update. And thanks again for having me. It was a pleasure. Dan Daviel, the president and CEO of Canaccord Genuity.